WWF Retro Raw number 350, February 7th of the year 2000. So, we had a recap of SmackDown, which is even more amazing than I remember. So the gimmick was, the Radicals were given matches. A, two singles matches and a tag match. And I think they had to win two out of three to get jobs. Yes. So, Dean Malenko wrestles X-Pac. I think Dean trained X-Pac, or his dad did, or something. But uh, X-Pac wins. Dean Malenko is a loser. Yes. They do the tag match. is Eddie Guerrero and Saturn versus the New Age Outlaws. Now, I don't know if this is the plan to finish, but Eddie hit a frog splash and dislocated his elbow. And he was in great pain, and so they Road Dog just pinned him. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that Eddie was supposed to win. Yeah. Yeah. So the Radicals... Because otherwise, I mean, what's the point? In fact, I know he was supposed to win. Because what was the point of the third yeah, match? Yeah, what's the be? point of the third match? So the Radicals are already jobless. But they still got to do Chris Benoit versus Hunter Hearst Humsley in the main event. Yes. Chris Benoit's last match in WCW, he won their world championship. Mm -hmm. He is the, uh, the, 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 how would you call it, linear WCW champion at this point. Now, I remembered that Hunter beat him. I forgot that Hunter kicked out of the headbutt and hit the pedigree and won. Where the hell have you been? Well, 20 years have gone by. <laughs> yeah, I remember this vividly. So that's what happened, everyone. That is what happened. This was the match where Triple H went backstage and he said that Benoit was a good hand and he could be carried. Hmm. Huh. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. I I watched the recap and now that you say that they changed the finish of that second match, I, it makes more sense because literally yes. my first note is like they couldn't give the radicals anything. No, I, I, Eddie. That they were supposed to win the second match and Eddie got hurt, so they did their finish and that was that. Made the whole thing all weird. Yes. <laughs> Show did. So here on Raw, X-Pot comes out. So Tori was Kane's girlfriend. She spent uh, the holidays with X-Pot due to mass stipulation and said he was a perfect gentleman. And now another month has gone by. So now she and X-Pot are suddenly a couple and Kane is institutionalized again. Yeah, I didn't know where he was. That's what they said. Yeah. See, I actually didn't hear that part, so you you telling me that now is is kind of filling me in. Okay, I'll talk about. I don't want to. I don't want to spoil it now, but I I do want to talk about Kane's return at the end of the show when we get to it. At the end, yes, mm -hmm. the end. So before X Pac can say anything, the radicals all come out, and X Pac bails, thinking he's outnumbered four to one. They say they are just there to talk. Have we talked about? Perry Saturn and Chris Benoit getting these super fancy dress shirts that are like four sizes too big. Well, yeah. It's a 90s thing or 2000s yes, it thing. it is a 90s thing. Right. So they all say, we tried to make a noise. We tried to make an impact. We wanted contracts. And Dean says, we were good. We were damn good, but not good enough. We blew it. Crowd is chanting for Eddie. Thanks the fans for their support and the privilege of performing in front of them. Benoit says it's, th it's uh, time to thank the man who made it possible, Cactus Jack. I got to say that, uh, jumping ahead here a little bit, as, as it turns out, this is all a swerve, and they all jump and, and beat up Foley at the end, but I didn't remember that at the time, so I'm watching this segment here thinking, could these guys be bigger geeks? And the answer is no. <laughs> this fucking promo where they come out here and... Oh, man, it's a privilege to be able to perform in front of you guys. And uh, we did our best, but we just weren't good enough. We blew it. <laughs> like, you guys are just geeks. That turns out it was all a swerve. So I was I was, I was, was better by the end. Okay. Man, they buried him at the beginning. So Jack comes out, but before he can talk, Hunter and Steph come out on top of the stage. Speaking of geeks, who the hell wrote Stephanie McMahon's dialogue? I don't know, but I really wanted to see 2019 stuff after watching her here. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> this convocation of admiration makes me want to puke. She was just beyond awful here. The worst of Stephanie McMahon. There are lots of Dallas Cowboys references for some reason. I don't really know why. The Cowboys in this age were not anything relevant. Uh, Hunter says none of them could get the job done, but they're all still here. At this point, Hunter, who was fresh off 
taking five men to beat him up last week on Raw. Fresh off beating Benoit with his finisher on SmackDown, Hunter challenges Cactus to one last match and no way out. He's unstoppable. Oh, yeah. He's a juggernaut. I told you this. Well, they did that angle with with uh, with Foley where he beat Foley before yes. the Royal Rumble and everybody's defending that. Look at it in hindsight now. They're building up this big match for No Way Out and I'm just sitting there as a fan going, this dude's got no chance. <laughs> he's got no, no chance. No one can beat Hunter or no, something. No, he's unstoppable. Yes. So any type of match Cactus wants, but no barbed wire 2x4s, no thumbtacks, just a match, plain and simple. So Jack chooses Hell in a Cell. Hunter immediately realizes he has made, he has made a mistake, but he has a huddle with Steph. He agrees, but then he wants to put Cactus Jack's career on the line. And Jack agrees to this, but if he wins, he gets to be in the WrestleMania main event, period. No title matches between No Way Out and Mania. And Hunter accepts. So, to clarify, it's Hunter versus Jack for the title at No Way Out. If Hunter wins, Jack retires. If Jack wins, he's a champion and he main events Mania. Great. So Hunter says he wants to fight Jack now. He's making his way down to ringside and tells the Radicals you can say thank you to the man who gave you, you gave you the opportunity and gave you contracts. And Jack says, hey, wait a minute. And then the Radicals all beat him up. And Hunter hits a pedigree because of course he does. This wasn't bad, but God, it went forever. It went forever. Like, they, they talk about 20-minute opening segments. This, this may have been a 30-minute opening segment. I mean, they did a very good job building up the, the match, but... I just didn't buy it. I mean, granted, I know what happens. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, if you've watched the storyline, Hunter beats him at every turn. They couldn't even give the guy the one win on Raw to give him that one smidgen of credibility where you could think in the back of your mind, you know what? Maybe he could beat this guy again. Even on this show? Nope. Spoiler alert, they're in a 10-man tag later. Nope, nope, nope. So, Hunter gives the Radicals a pep talk, and as I said, he announces a 10-man tag where it would be himself, X-Pac, Benoit, Saturn, and Malenko against Mick Foley and any four partners he can find. They all have a big laugh at this. Yeah, Is this where the no friends thing started? Because, like, nobody came out to help Mick Foley. Oh, no, it's been going on forever. By the end, they did. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. they yeah, took, he did well, have friends yeah, there at the, the end. The showed yeah. up late. <laughs> yeah. The New Age Outlaws versus Edge and Christian. Man, I watched this match, and the women are just going crazy for Edge and Christian. Mm -hmm. Like... Do we see that nowadays? I know that Shane, your wife, likes Finn Balor, but I don't seem to recall like watching Ron hearing like women squealing for Finn Balor. I, uh, you're right. I don't think they go as crazy now. Like I'm in a couple Facebook groups of like wrestling fans, and all the girls in there fawn over Finn Balor. But like, it's not like that at the live events. I've been to almost every Ron SmackDown that's come to the Chicago area since I started watching, and yeah, it's not like that at all. This is what this is what's missing in wrestling today. It is like that. This is what Filthy and I want to bring back. Hot men? No, women screaming at no. us, you idiot. Yeah. I was going to say, it, uh, it is like that when my wife sees Randy Orton. That's so, true. And that one specific example, I can, I can yeah. verify. Vinny's wife makes him take photos on his phone of Randy Orton on the TV. I wouldn't say make. But, it, 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 but I mean, like, why did she just Google it? It earns me brownie points. There's a way better picture on the internet, I'm sure, than what you take on your phone of my that, TV. That's true. Yeah, it's weird. That's true. I actually may have some Randy Orton photos from ringside the other night. Let you me might. look. Yeah. She'll enjoy it. Maybe them. she'll bring me some cookies. So, this Outlaws versus Edge and Christian match here, it seemed like a hell of a match, but I can't quite be sure, because usually it was the Dudleys on camera. He came out with doing commentary. Devo was actually awesome on commentary, by the way. Bubba just stood over JR and intimidated him the whole time. So, Christian has the win with a reverse DDT. The place is just going nuts. But Billy breaks up the pin, and then Bubba interferes, Road Dog hits the pump handle slam, and wins. Oh, I got some excellent Randy Orton pictures. You're very, very close up as well. Oh, excellent. Yeah. <laughs> She'll be thrilled. I'm going to send them to you. All right. The, uh, let's see, the Dudleys bully JR for a while until Edge and Christian chase them away. Mark Henry tells Mae Young not to go to ringside. She's pregnant, you see. Pregnant with his child. Yes. Yes. They keep saying she is with child. Yes. Airdrop. Four <laughs> photos from Brian Alvarez. Is that is that she how you knows. referred to it, Shane, with your wife, that she was with child? Uh, so you told no, your friends? I said, no, I was like... She, this is my wife. She is with child. She wasn't the Virgin Mary, so I was like, she's pregnant. Okay. Uh, so, I when like did the term, they announce she was pregnant? 
Well, they didn't on this show, you see. Yeah. Because okay. there's a bunch of stuff that happens on SmackDown that they do a shitty job of recapping, so they just presume that everybody watches everything. Okay. Yeah, this was the first time I knew that she was pregnant. I mean, aside from knowing from years ago. Yeah. I don't remember any other storylines on this show about her being pregnant. I wonder if she gives birth on this show or if it's on, like, SmackDown. I would hate to miss that. <laughs> so we have a Kurt Angle promo. Tells us all he's not the same as Mark Henry, even though they're both Olympians. He is successful, you see, while Mark Henry's greatest accomplishment is knocking up Mae Young. Which, hey, he notes, uh, which he notes did require intensity. Yeah, that reminds me, by the way. So, Shane, do you know where the Mae Young storyline goes? I do not. Oh, boy. Because he just started watching. <laughs> oh, are you in for a Two treat? years ago. <laughs> yeah, so like... Are you so following went, along every week? Uh, so, actually, no. I went back to the very first episode of Raw, and I'm currently fl- I'm watching Raw, and then they don't have any WCW, WCW Saturday nights from that era. No. So, I'm watching the pay-per-views. So, I'm getting to the Monday Night Wars. I but like, see. I'm at Bash at the Beach 93. 90- 93 right now. Oh, my God. You're in for a treat coming up, my friend. <laughs> in a lot of different ways. Have you heard of Vince Russo? Oh, I have. Okay. Just checking. Kind of sad, actually. Go ahead. <laughs> so, Kurt Angle versus Mark Henry. Mark Henry immediately throws Kurt Angle onto his head. And then Mae Young comes shuffling out. Mark takes a backdrop on the floor for a 400-pound man. Do you know how many times in his career that Mark Henry has gotten hurt? A few. And every time he has a match, he takes a bump outside. Yeah. Remember when he was all banged up and he had that feud with Brock and Brock just kept giving him moves outside on the floor? It's like they're trying to kill this poor guy. So May hits the ring. She attacks Kurt for the DQ. But Kurt grabs her, hits her with an angle slam, and then does the gold medal celebration. And they play his music. And they play his music. Well, <laughs> I guess because he, he killed an old lady. He won. Who was with child. He didn't win the match. Yeah. So, there you go. All I wrote is, the fuck is going on? <laughs> the rock. Why did he win the match? An old lady entered the ring and he attacked her. No, she, she hit him first. Oh, Mark Henry I got was disqualified. it. I got it. Mark Henry was disqualified because an 80-year-old woman hit Kurt Angle? Hey, it's this interference. That was ridiculous. <laughs> the Rock arrives to the building. EMTs tend to May backstage. She is so hurt that she clarifies she likes to be on top of Mark, and then she wants to take her shirt off. Yes. That poor EMT. You know what, though? Like, So they do the deal where you only see her from the back and she takes her top off and then they, they zoom in on the EMT and he's just appalled. <laughs> and so, like, that's funny, except it's WWE, so they keep filming this guy yeah. and he has to remain appalled for, like, 30 seconds. And by the end, they killed the joke. Well, that's what that's, they do. That is what yeah. they do. Hollies versus the Acolytes in a hardcore tag team match. Yeah. Oh, my God. I believe Vistra's white cousin was doing security. Mm. Just a huge man outside. So they immediately brawl over the concession stands. Bottles are broken all over Farouk's head. Oh, everyone's head. It's like yeah. it's nitro over here. And they're in they're on, on on or in a bar when here comes Viscera. Yeah, Viscera. And he... He snuck in. Maybe it's icy there. Because Viscera comes running into the screen and with a... He slips and he falls down... The earth shakes, the concrete breaks, he gets up and he breaks a two by four over Bradshaw's back. I laughed, and I laughed, and I laughed, and I laughed, and I laughed. Crash Holly gets the pin. What in the hell was this I wrote? Yeah, it about was, my wife walked in during this, and it was embarrassing. Uh, <laughs> she she saw Viscera eat it shit. It always I'm is. Laughing. It's <laughs> yes. just... Now, my favorite part, though, was like, I think it was Bradshaw moved the popcorn machine and lightly tapped... Uh, one of the hollies with it and like the holly like bumped like crazy for it it was insane i remember this because it, it was like they didn't plan this and he didn't know just how maybe how hot it was or how heavy it was and thought just to be safe yeah, maybe here. it was burned may have been yeah yeah that's what yeah. happened so jericho is jericho versus viscera yeah viscera is just in a backstage brawl and then now he's in a match yeah that's it, weird <laughs> uh yeah so jericho does a promo calls viscera the love child of mr t and fat albert also calls him Viscera the Hut. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> so, oh God! Oh, oh my God! Oh, this segment. I Let's talk about, about Chris Jericho. I here. forgot about this until right, right now. Yes, Chris Jericho. He is an all-time great. Mm-hmm. You understand? I do. 
And he is a great wrestler, and he is a great worker. All right? By the way, is present tense. Sure. It's still, still going okay. on, yeah. He was, he was great back then, mm-hmm. but he did have a reputation when he came to WWE of being a little bit sloppy. And a lot of that, a lot of that was overblown and unfair. Okay? Not in this match. <laughs> First thing this guy does, he gets whipped into the ropes, and he goes to put his arm up, and he misses, and he fucking snaps his neck and almost kills himself. Falls down. Almost cuts his own head off. Yep. So then he goes for his springboard, like the Silver King died, but he has a drop kick. Yeah. Fucking slips, flops, falls on the ground. Then he goes for a baseball slide, and I think that he was supposed to miss and just land on his feet, but he missed his feet, and he just splatted on the ground. It was like three things in ten seconds that he messed up. But he got it back on track. I do got I got to give him credit for that. So he's making his comeback, and the Holly is just attack for the DQ. Who would ever think that in a Chris Jericho viscera match that the sloppy one would be Chris Jericho? It is amazing. Yeah, it is amazing. So the AP attack viscera. Now we already talked about viscera falling on his ass backstage. Talked about Chris Jericho having a very bad night. They were both miles and miles and miles ahead of the acolytes. This was the worst 40 seconds of their careers in this, this post-match brawl. They're, they kind of attack Viscera. They're trying to do double teams. They can't get on the same page. Neither one's in the right spot. Farouk runs the rope. Farouk almost decapitates himself. He yep. does the same thing. I've seen guys do this. I've done it. It happens to everyone. How the more. fuck did you do it? You're so tall. That's That tells you how horrible I was. <laughs> I guess that does. <laughs> but, I've never done that. But it's because it's over your head. That should make it easier because I got to reach up farther to get the rope. No, it's over your head. You have to jump up to get your neck on it. Are we thinking of two different things? Yeah, because the top rope is so high, Brian, you run right underneath it. You're short, you see. That's what they're doing when they mess up. Point is, all right. <laughs> Do you understand <laughs> what I'm saying, Rob? Your neck has to go under the top rope. Yeah, but then come up at, at neck level. I know, but first your head has to go under the rope. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. And you're tall, so how does that even happen? Well, that's how bad I was. Okay. Okay. Point being, I've seen this a hundred times. Yes. I don't think I've ever seen it twice in the same segment. No, it's it's incredible. So it makes you think there was a hole in the ring over there or something. Something. This is an amazing train wreck. This yes. Jericho, Viscera, Holly's APA segment. It sucked. <laughs> At this point, I wrote, Radicals mutter incoherently. Well, Michael Cole's there. My main man, Michael Cole. And... He is trying to give the Radicals a guilt trip. I can't believe what you guys did to Mick Foley. He brought you in. They're like, we don't give a shit. Well, what if he has to go out there tonight with no partners? We don't give a shit. Cole's trying so hard. I don't know what he was trying to get out of him. Like, you're right, Michael. We are shitheads. We are very bad people, and we apologize. Didn't happen. They told him to fuck off. It's all about the money. (laughs) <laughs> pretty much how it went that's yeah. exactly what it was that's what yeah. they said Kevin Kelly let us know he will interview The Rock later yep <laughs> why was Luna mad at Gangrel she was not mad at Gangrel she was mad she was ranting to Gangrel yeah and he's trying to calm he's, her down and I was like why bother dude well it's Luna it's Luna <laughs> just let her go the best part is she's ranting and ranting he tries to calm her down tries to level her off he just she just keeps going she's going she keeps going and then Luna in her voice shouts and furthermore <laughs> yes. I cried with laughter <laughs> yes she's very she's very uh what would be the word erudite thank you Vinny erudite <laughs> all right remember last Much week like myself Remember last week when Harvey Whippleman won the women's title in one of the worst segments ever? I'd, I'd already forgotten, but yes. Well, now Jacqueline's champion. Yeah, I don't know No what explanation happened. for what happened. I have no idea. Lost it at SmackDown one day after winning. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Poor Harvey. That could have been a shoot. So, Jackie beats Luna in two minutes with a German suplex. And then Gangrel grabs Jacqueline. So, why was Luna mad again? I'm still confused. I have no idea. Okay. So, I, I guess Jackie <laughs> hit her at some point. Yeah. <laughs> So after the match, Gangrel grabs Jacqueline and hits a big DDT on her. Yeah. And so I, is he the champion now? I'm supposed to be appalled and outraged, but last week I saw a woman go through a table. Yeah. This is low level. This is yeah. assault here. I, I just saw an 80 year old woman take an angle slam an hour ago. Yeah. 
So this is this D, an active wrestler taking a DDT is minor. Hey, how long you been watching this, Shane? These 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 old things. I know it's been two years as a fan, but when did you start going back and watching this stuff? Uh, I started probably probably around uh, WrestleMania 2017. So right around then, but it's been a slow process. But that's like, when you started watching the old stuff. You're saying, yeah, okay. the old stuff. Yeah. So like, it's a person who is watching WWE. And you saw the mm-hmm. women's evolution and everything they do nowadays. Like, what do you think going back and seeing some of this stuff with the women? They're naked. Yeah. People are beating the shit out of them. I, I, I don't like it. It's it's just, it's weird. I don't know. Like, everybody is like, I just remember people talking about the Attitude Era and being like, it was the best wrestling ever. And, you know, it was a great period. And, I, you know, I'm going back and watching it and, like, as much as people don't like that when Brian's right, you're right, dude. Like, Thank you. When it's, I mean, man, when Shane. It's, when it's Stone Cold Steve Austin, when it's The Rock, when it's Vince McMahon, it's really Kane. good. Yeah, Kane, uh, Undertaker, all those guys. <laughs> and so... That's the it's best just, of moment right there. <laughs> yeah. And just now it's, it, you know, now it's just... And, like, now we have people like Seth Rollins and all these great workers and things like that that... You know, if they can do what they can do, they'll have great matches and stuff. And but, yeah, the Attitude Era, from what I've seen, doesn't impress me all that much. <laughs> yeah, it's been a little underwhelming going back. Not gonna lie, it, it's about to get. This is better than most. Of well, them. yeah, this is gonna get better. The other side's gonna get worse. Yes, I do right. know that. Taz hype video. It was awesome. It was awesome. He. Mm-hmm. Ended Kurt Angle's streak of the Royal Rumble and then basically disappeared. I was going to say, he debuted the Rumble. We've follow-up seen sucked. Him. We haven't seen him one time he, since he, the Rumble. He came out and choked Angle out again the next night. But yeah. yeah. So he Did he this, on Raw? Yeah. I have no memory of this. It, it, it was that. I don't blame you. <laughs> it was it was brief. <laughs> so he's from the streets. Oh, I do remember because he was so short. <laughs> yeah. Because I know how tall Angle is. Yeah. Yeah, he was short. Yeah. He's from the streets, Taz is. Everyone he knew is dead or in jail. He's not afraid of anyone, and the mood is about to change. Kind of depressing when you think about that line. Yeah. Kevin Kelly interviews The Rock. Okay, I gotta I gotta say something here. This was a famous Poontang Pie promo by The Rock. Kevin Kelly was so awesome in this segment. Mm-hmm. He was the best. There's a reason he did 90% of Rock's interviews. He was the best at his job. He was he was a great personality. He was a great interviewer. He had great facial expressions. He had great byplay with all the talent. He was a great announcer. These assholes went with Michael Cole. <laughs> Can well, you imagine? I think the most important thing that you mentioned is that he's a personality. He he's has a, a personality. normal he's a likable fella. Yeah. He feels you know, you real. Have, you have Dasha and Charlie just useless. On He's a robot. Yeah, Vinny, yeah. the other day, you messed up. There was a, uh, I think it was you. Probably. Somebody was talking about how, oh, no, it's Dave. Like, in the middle of the Raw report, Dave goes, why did Charlie change her clothes? And I was <laughs> oh, like, yeah. I don't know, maybe they just wanted a wardrobe change. And he goes, but there's no reason for it. Like, one segment she was in one outfit and then later she was in another outfit and i mean part of me is like why are we talking about this we've been spending 40 minutes on raw who gives a shit why she's wearing another outfit but he just kept bringing it up and then the next day we find out it's because it, one of them was dasha yeah <laughs> dude <laughs> which is a good reason i mean come on it's not dave's fault it's not dave's fault no. it's like this is how generic these women are but anyway the point is kevin kelly was so great and they went with michael cole <laughs> It's just Ugh. mind-blowing. Well, he's slim. He was so good he with the rock hair. Here. He is the perfect anti-rock. Yes. Like, we, we saw, or will see, some Jonathan Coachman skits with the rock, and he tries to be the anti-rock, but he takes it too far. Yeah, he's, he's too much of, and he's too much of a geek. Yeah, he's trying too hard. Yeah. Kevin Kelly has a natural geekiness to him that fits much better. He's perfect. So, they said Poontang Pie at least a dozen times in this segment. Mm-hmm. There's a Poontang Pie shirt. Mitch Rock put over Kevin Kelly's face and told him not to move. Kevin Kelly with his shirt over his head was better than Cole. Yes. That's how much personality he had under that shirt. Yes. So he promises to beat the big show at No Way Out. The Rock does. Not Kevin Kelly. And he announces that Cactus Jack may not have any friends, but he's got one. And it's not five on one, it's five on two. 
What a nice guy. And that pop just for the two. Yes. <laughs> Everyone just went ballistic. What show? What city was this in? They should have yeah. never left. Yeah. They should be doing that, that city today. So, yes, everyone, The Rock... Well, if they did that city today, they would not get these reactions, Vinny. That's also true. Nor would they draw this crowd. That's also true. Yeah. So, yeah, The Rock was very good at promos, everyone. Yeah. This is another good one. And it was like... Well, I guess Poontank Pie was new, but... It was like all of his same material, and yes. nobody was sick of it. He's just The Rock, so he made it great. D'Lo and The Godfather admire their women for a while. Then we had D'Lo and The Godfather versus The Dudley Boys. So, Godfather's women distracted the ref which let the Dudleys chop block the Godfather yes best way thing that ever happened to the Godfather way to go ladies he rolled outside and all of his women fawned all over him yes so he clutched at his knee so D'Lo tried to go it alone he hit the frog splash but they broke up the pin and they pinned him with the 3D a table got set up and BB the busty EMT was out there and they were going to power bomb her through, power bomb her through the table when Edge and Christian and the Hardys made the save. And the women squealed when they came out to make the save. Yes. <laughs> Man, these women used to love these guys. Now there's just no women left. Michael Cole interviewed Cactus Jack. Jack says he's been proving people wrong for 15 years. He will find a way to get th get through tonight. He will find a way to get through Hell in a Cell, and he will main event WrestleMania. So this main event here, it was fresh in my mind 19 years later. I think I watched it 20 times in a row when it aired live. Wow. And uh, 19 years later, it's still unbelievably awesome. By this point in my life, up until about, I'd say, 97, like late 97, I was able to just go back and watch everything a million times. And maybe it was because of the addition of Thunder and SmackDown that, like, come 98, 99, I watch everything once. Mm. I just didn't have the time. That's why when we when we were reviewing the stuff earlier, like, there would be promos from 96, 97. I remembered them word for word. I remembered matches move for move. Because back then, I could watch shit over and over and over again. Come 98, 99, 2000, it's like, it's one and done. I remembered this match. Mm -hmm. I didn't remember everything about it. I remembered it was unbelievably great. I remember spots in it. What I, what I had forgotten was, what a shitty finish. There was a horrible finish. <laughs> it was horrible. That is true. <laughs> like, I was watching, and I just, I, I didn't remember the finish. Because yeah. it was just like, this is an awesome 10-man tag. And I figured, okay, well, like, you know, probably Mankind will pin Dean Malenko. That was what I presumed. Mankind's going to pin the really short one. Because, you know, he's going for the championship. Sure. It, getting Cactus a win would be a good idea. Yep. Or my second was... Triple H will pin either Scotty or Grandmaster. Yeah. These were my two finishes that I thought we were going to have here. Okay. And so, I was I was half right. So the match, as announced, is Triple H, X Pac, Benoit Malenko, and Saturn on one team. Rock and Cactus come out. So Cactus comes out first. Huge reaction. The Rock comes out. I can't I don't have the words for the reaction he got from this crowd. They are coming out to fight two on five, but who should come out to Put their lives on the line and even the odds, but too cool and Rikishi. And all they did was have to dim the lights and start playing that music, and everybody went crazy. Remember when I said last week that I I had this idea that too cool were higher on the totem pole than they really were? Mm -hmm. Like, I remembered them being like upper mid carters or almost main eventers, but really they were just, you know, low mid card geeks. Yeah. Wrong. I guess this was what I remembered. <laughs> They're out here in the main event, and the place is going crazy for them. This this crowd loved everything in this match. Yes. And it was not like... You remember we used to always say, you cannot have a six-man in the Raw main event and have it be bad. Right. Okay. Well, you can now. Because <laughs> the matches are so fucking patterned that, like, they're going to get the heat... On, it doesn't matter how many guys are in the match. They're going to get the heat on one guy for, like, 14 minutes, and then they'll do all their near falls. Dude, whenever they got heat on somebody in this match, it was for like a minute, and then he got a tag, mm -hmm. and then they got the heat on someone else, and then he got a tag. Yeah. The only extended heat segment was with Grandmaster, yeah. right? Yeah. That was the longest one. Mm -hmm. And then he goes for the tag, the ref doesn't see it, and after this amazing match, everything is going so great, Grandmaster's in there, big six-way, Hunter, of course... 
you'll be stunned. He hits the pedigree on Grandmaster Sexay. Chris Benoit comes off the top with a diving headbutt, and Mick Foley tries to break up the pin. But it's the finish. <laughs> How did he fuck this up? I don't know. Like, everybody's going crazy, and he breaks up the pin, and they go nuts because they think the match has been saved. Benoit is unmoving, yeah. and the referee just counts the pin. Everybody dies. Yeah. I had forgotten that finish. I had totally that forgotten was horrible. that too. It did not go well. I I don't know if they changed things mid match, or I don't know if if Foley didn't get the memo backstage. But yes, <laughs> the finish was bad, very very yeah. bad. And it looks like, uh, as far as I can tell, it's just on him because yeah, no one else just, is trying to bring he this. Fucked spin. up. Maybe you thought it was real. I I don't <laughs> just know. Caught up in the moment. Uh, listen, when I watched this match, I had two thoughts. Number one, the radicals had to be so. Happen. Oh my god, can you imagine? They went from world championship wrestling to this. And the first two shows were rough. They had to be on top of the world. Oh my god. And then my other thought was, Foley's got to be so pissed off that he's retiring now. <laughs> can you imagine deciding, <laughs> I'm done. I'm going to have one more match with Triple H, and then I'm out of here. And the next week, the fucking radicals show up, and you're in this 10-man tag? Yeah. He's got to be kicking himself. So the only other thing I can add here is this was an awesome match and it got an awesome reaction, but everyone was still true to themselves, by which I mean Rikishi is a killer, but too cool, even though they will bravely step up and fight when no one else will, even though they will take on the odds, they're very courageous, but they are still comedy geeks. Yeah. Grandmaster Sexay, he goes up for the big leg drop, he puts on the goggles, does the rubs the goggles thing, takes flight, hits the big leg drop, and then instead of making a pin... He gets up and starts to dance, and they just trip him from behind and lay him out, and that's how they get the heat on him. But that's fine. He's Grandmaster Sexay. Yep. What do you want? Everyone had a character. Yes. They weren't all the same. No, they were not all the same. Yes. So he, even even when even when he's put in a position to be the top to be among the top guys, he still just go be Grandmaster Sexay. Yep. It's okay. Not everyone has not everyone has to be Superman. We have the Rock and Cactus Jack to be Superman. You can be. I would have said Aquaman, but that's not you true You can anymore. be Grandmaster Sexay. You can be, you can be Booster Gold. Monday Night Raw, as Vinny would say. Starts with the DX and the Radicals coming out. Steph's getting the cheapest kind of bullshit cheap heat. Just telling the fans to shut up, screeching louder and louder. So they have footage of Kane grabbing Tori by the neck on SmackDown. The fans cheer, and so he gives her a tombstone. So she's out there this week in a neck brace. And Stephanie blames the fans. Says, this made me sick. Holding each and every one of you responsible. Have ever mentioned how much I hate the term each and every one of you? Like <laughs> It's on every it show. It fucking permeates this business. I, I hear years. New Japan. When, when, when Jay White won the IWGP title and he dropped the each and every one of you, I was like, dude, I can't take this anymore. So Honor says, no more kindness, no more weakness. Signs a bunch of matches. It's going to be Grandmaster versus the Road Dog, Scotty Tuhati versus Billy Gunn. Speaking of ass, he says, Saturday Malenko will face Rikishi, handicap match. Rock versus Chris Benoit. He cuts a promo on Kane, calling him a burned freak with sexual inadequacies. And by the way, they're portraying Tori as a heel with a fake injury, even though in storyline she took a real tombstone and fucked up her neck. Signs Kane versus X Pac, but. The match will only take place if Kane can defeat Hunter and a partner of his choosing in a no-DQ handicap match later on tonight. And then all the babyfaces come down. There's a big mini battle royal, and that's the opening segment. Yeah, you, you missed what I thought was a real important thing at the beginning. The the rattles, radicals come out. They come out first. There's a decent reaction to them. They're, it looks like they're about to say something, and then Hunter's music hits. And he comes down, and there's a moment where you can tell that all of DX stands in front of all the Radicals. Hunter even waits until <clears throat> it was either Road Dog or Billy Gunn gets to the other turnbuckle, and it's like all four of them stand in front and block the camera shot of the new Radicals before they get the hard camera shot in the pyro. And it was like, wow, this is a put people in their place moment. We had Devon versus Edge versus Jeff Hardy. Winner gets a tag title match for their team at the pay per view. 
So Bubba tries to get involved. Matt and Christian give him a suplex outside. Edge goes for a pin. Jeff throws him over the top. Twist of fate. Senton. Edge breaks it up. Go back and forth for a while. And long story short, Devon pins Edge after Edge tries a spear and hits Jeff. So the Dudleys get a shot at the new age outlaws at the pay-per-view. It was a fine match, I guess. Short. Yeah, but un- unfortunately it was two-on-one advantage babyfaces, and the babyfaces couldn't get along, leading to the heel getting the win. Well, yeah, but I mean, the, the story was the babyfaces can't get along because one of them, only one of them, is going to get a tag title match for their team. I've seen, I've seen, I've seen this done worse. At oh, least absolutely. this, it was every man for himself. This was like a Royal Rumble. So we had a show long storyline, which was very weird because this show took place on February 14, 2000, Valentine's Day. So Mark Henry and Mae Young are going to celebrate Valentine's Day. So, long story short, we'll go over all the segments individually, but at the end of the day, they get a very, very nice room. They enjoy each other's company, so to speak. (laughs) They exchange gifts, and they express their love for each other. And because it's Mark Henry and Mae Young, we're, like, supposed to be appalled, and, like, Jerry uh, Jerry Lawler vomits in his crown. He's just disgusted. But I was watching it thinking, this is very sweet. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? It really is a different time. There was no swerve. There was no humiliation. There was a man and a woman who were in love with each other, and they found the time to enjoy a very, very nice Valentine's Day. And I was supposed to be disgusted. I mean, I wouldn't want to spend my Valentine's Day with Mae Young, personally. But I mean, Mark seemed to enjoy it. She seemed to enjoy it. So, like... I thought it was great. Well, I think it's telling of of Raw today that there's so few happy segments anymore. Just the fact that Mark and May are happy, it's like, that was a great segment. I'm happy for them. I was so happy. They go to the hotel. The guy at the front desk is appalled. This fucker should be fired. Very judgmental. Mark Henry wants a room. And then he decides, God damn, it's Valentine's Day. Let's get a honeymoon suite. And he pays his money. They get their key. Mark is so excited. Mae Young is so happy. And up they go. <laughs> That's it. Yep. That was a segment. We had Road Dog and Brian Christopher. No heat for this match. Multiple chin locks by the Road Dog. And Christopher makes a comeback, misses a leg drop. Dog gets a pump handle slam, gets the pin. It was a match. It was fine. It was better than something shitty. <laughs> it, at least in the grand scheme of things made sense the heels didn't like the baby faces so we had a bunch of matches with them fighting each other so then they go back to mark henry and may young mark henry and may young they're going into their hotel room mark is about to walk in but then he stops i must carry my woman over the threshold oh she's giddy he <laughs> lifts her up in his big strong powerful arms and he carries her over the threshold into the room. The door shuts. Then the door opens and he remembers his bag is out there. He brings that in. <laughs> I was actually wondering if he'd leave it there. I really was. <laughs> well, it was left there. And I thought, oh, man, like, you know, Randy Orton's going to debut. He's going to shit in that bag or something like that. <laughs> That's going to be like the, the payoff where someone's going to be sad at the end. But you know what happens? Nothing. He brings a damn thing into the room and everybody's happy. And still I waited. Waiting for someone to shit in the bag. Something. Like, something's got to go wrong, you think. Because you watch Raw in 2019. We had Godfather and D'Lo versus Head Cheese. Oh, God. So Godfather and D'Lo are coming out with all the hoes. And there's one hoe in purple. She was something special. So they go down to the ring, and they cut backstage. Al Snow and Steve Blackman are doing Al Snow's version of terribly unfunny comedy. Go down to the ring. Sure as shit, Al Snow sees the hoe in the purple. And he decides she is very special. (laughs) And he starts dancing with her. And Steve Blackman is distracted. And Steve Blackman is pinned. All I could think was, 
Why is this fucking moron Steve Blackman teaming with his other moron? You know what I'm saying? Why is he doing this? He doesn't like Al Snow. They don't get along. He hates the guy and all of his ideas. They don't even win. Why is Steve Blackman teaming with this guy? Who's forcing them to team? It's, it should surprise no one. I relate to Steve Blackman, and he's the sympathetic guy in this for me. Don't even say that I'm Al Snow. <laughs> That's fighting words. I want to ask you the question, because it was made, the comparison was made when we did it. Um, when Dustin and I were a tag, did you enjoy Dustin and I or Head Cheese better? Dustin? Gold Dust and I, when we did the uh, we oh, basically that's did right. this yeah, gimmick. Yeah. You guys were way better. Because that's the way it was pitched to me, that when they put us together, they're like, if it seems funny and you're good, you'll stay babyface and you'll be the modern day version of Head Cheese. And if it doesn't go well, we'll turn you heel on them. I'm like, but you're a right. better Steve Blackman, and Dustin is a funnier Al Snow. Yes. So there you go. Although if you want the... I don't know if it's on YouTube or not. There was a show on Confidential where the premise was, and it was a shoot, there was 10 questions, and there would be a person asking the other person 10 questions. No one knew what the questions were. You had one take, live to tape, and you had to stay in character. Why isn't this on the WWE Network? I don't know, but we did it, and it was... I was asking Al Snow the questions when Goldust and I were the, the comedy team. And Goldust was the director that would come in every once in a while to try to make me more exciting as I asked questions to Al Snow. And it was the funniest goddamn thing you ever saw. It was so funny. If anybody can find it on YouTube or anywhere, share it. It was so damn funny. Someone's got to have it on tape somewhere. So Mark Henry and Mae Young are in the room, and they both decide, let's go slip into something more comfortable. And they both go to get changed. And I thought, man, who's in the bathroom? <laughs> Who's under the damn covers? You're just waiting for the swerve. I'm just fucking waiting. There's no way I thought that a Valentine's Day gimmick with with Mark Henry and May Young could possibly turn out just full of love. Kurt Angle comes out for a promo. He's now the European champion. Economy is up. Suicide rates down in Europe. Tourism up. U.S. depression rates are up, though. That's because Jericho won the Intercontinental title. It is his duty as an American hero to do the same for America. That he has graciously done for Europe. He wants Y2J and no way out for the Intercontinental title. But he wants Jericho tonight. Jericho isn't there. They show clips of China on the Tonight Show in a very tight, breast-exposing outfit. He says, I was once on the Tonight Show after I won an Olympic medal. I had self-respect. I didn't go out there in a tight leather outfit. Starts ranting about the three eyes. Jericho interrupts. So, Jericho buries Kurt and says... Calls him a special Olympic jackass. He says, I don't know if I want to give you a shot at No Way Out, but I want to give you a beating tonight. So, to recap, Kurt Angle wants to beat up Chris Jericho tonight. Chris Jericho wants to beat up Kurt Angle tonight. They both go down to beat each other up. Geeks come out and break it up. Where were they earlier? (laughs) Both men threaten to fight the other man. And then when they finally do it, and they both want to, geeks come down and break it up. And China came down and DDT'd Angle outside. Well, that's what we're told. I didn't see it, did we, you? We did see some movement. There was some movement. She had weird shorts on. I didn't notice. Well, she, they had short shorts where she had, you know, a couple inches of, of butt cheek hanging out. But then there was sort of some trim to her shorts that hung down to the bottom of her ass cheeks. So there was just these little loops hanging down that highlighted her ass cheeks for some reason. Interesting. What a drop that'll be. Lance repeatedly saying ass cheeks. There you go. Mark Henry is waiting for Mae Young. Somebody move their phone. Yeah, thank you. It's Rob's phone. Yes, Rob. Sorry, I was doing looking for the... uh picture of china's outfit from the tonight show I for see. research purposes yeah a pervert <laughs> research purposes disgusted i love how even when rob's doing a good job his phone fucks show up i'm saying <laughs> mark henry's waiting for may young <laughs> she comes out in that negligee jumps under the covers with him yes rob sorry i just wanted to say i will not be looking that up for research purposes thank you so she's so excited jumping under the covers with this guy he's so happy this is where Lawler almost barfs. I was like, dude, come on. Have some romance in your life, Lawler. 
And really, in all honesty, is there a bigger age discrepancy here than in most of Lawler's relationships? Oh! Please, Lance. Please. Chris Benoit, I would have to do the math, actually. <laughs> Maybe not. I don't know. How old was Mark here? Eh, he's probably 30, actually. Let's find out. She was 76. Yeah, that might be a bit tough. Mark yeah. Henry was born in 71, so he would have been 29. I think okay, this is, this is a bigger one. It's, this is a, a bigger discrepancy, yes. But they're in love, Lance. And they're they both are. very much of legal age. He's consenting nearly 30, adults. and she is 76. They are consenting adults. Benoit versus The Rock. So, I don't know if you guys notice this, everybody. Some After Dark here. There was a fucking time traveler in the crowd. Did you notice this, Lance? No. In the first or second row, directly opposite the hard camera, somebody held up a giant sign that read, The People's Ballers. (laughs) 16 (laughs) years later, The Rock starred and produced Ballers on HBO. That was really weird. I wonder what he meant. They had a fun match. Rock had the win with the DDT, which was odd. Guerrero took the ref. Benoit with the crossface on the Rock. Rock gets the ropes. Benoit's angry. Rock gets Samoa and drop. They brawl outside. Big Show runs down. He attacks the Rock with a shove. He puts his hands on his face (laughs) and pushes him. And then Benoit's a German. German with a bridge. The fucking referee, I don't even know where he Takes was at. Takes forever. Dude, he's outside on the floor. Benoit is in a full bridge on his head with a 250-pound dude doing a German suplex. You see Benoit looking around for the fucking referee <laughs> so like a rock. shoot. Where the fuck are you? Finally, the ref slides in, counts the pin. Chris Benoit has pinned The Rock. So showing the radicals destroy The Rock. Big shows there is noted. I forget every week he's employed. <laughs> and not only that, he's feuding with The Rock. But it hit me that Big Show, somebody should go back. Everybody goes back and they they track like how many times the Big Show turned heel and babyface. Somebody find out how many years Big Show was a monster to be overcome on the road to WrestleMania. It had to have been like nine years. Here he was again. A roadblock on The Rock's way to WrestleMania. Just like he was for Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins and all these other guys over the years. Well, you know, Vince likes guys to beat a giant to head to WrestleMania. Mark Henry's in the room. They've enjoyed each other's company. He says, damn, I almost forgot your present. And he reaches into the drawer where one might find the Gideon Bible. And inside is a box of chocolates. He feeds her a chocolate. She says, oh, Mark, I've got a surprise for you, too. She goes over there and unveils edible undies. He's so excited. She puts them on. She jumps in bed. They're having the time of their lives. That was the end. That (laughs) was the payoff. They went to town again. No Harvey Whippleman. No no Harvey. No Swerve. No Orton. Nothing. They just enjoyed a Valentine's Day together. And Mae Young is so charismatic. I just, I love her. Mr. Ass and Scotty Too Hotty. This stupid fucking thing. (laughs) Ass beats him up. Goes for a stinger splash. Christopher punches him on the way in. Scotty falls on top, gets the pin. In a really odd pin at that. Yes. Place goes nuts. It actually looked like Mark Henry and Mae Young under the covers. Place goes crazy. <laughs> and then Billy beats his ass, tosses him outside like a geek, and they play Billy's music. Why the fuck did they bother? It did nothing for Billy. It did jack shit. It could have done something for Scotty, because the people popped when he won, but then they put him back in his place. This was stupid. Yeah, it's, it's the, the two-week elevation, probably. Maybe they goes longer, but yeah, it was the... Uh... The uh, two cool crew get to step up as a main event last week, but remind you that they're not quite main event. Kevin Kelly says, we'll talk to The Rock next. They come back. It is Crash Holly versus Essa Rios. No Rock. So somewhere, 
Esser Rios won the light heavyweight title from Gilbert. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember either of these two being on television in forever. No, this, they just appeared out of nowhere. Is this like the debut of Lita? Uh, I, f- I feel like she was there as a hoe. Well, yeah, but that... But as I a don't... character, yes, yes. So she's the star of the act, diving Hurricane Ron off the steps, big pop. Rios boots him, big moonsault gets the pin, then Lita hits a big moonsault, then the people cheer, and Bob on commentary howls. He's disgusted that a super heavyweight was just beaten by a woman. So they go back to Kelly. Coming up next, The Rock. Go to commercial, come back. Bob's in the ring yelling at Crash. He says, I know you've got a problem with women. It's a good thing you have that right hand, because you're not getting anything from any women. Get out of this ring. I'll show you how Hardcore Holly kicks some ass. Hardcore Holly's opponent is Taz. Yep. They have... Just the most nothing happening match. Bob gets the heat. He beats Taz's ass. Taz makes a comeback, goes for the Taz mission. Crash runs in for the disqualification. <laughs> Are you kidding me? So then Taz suplexes Crash. He's out of the ring. This did jack shit for anybody. Yeah, to me, this really. Again, maybe it was by design, but it's like, to me, it really sort of exposed Taz. It's like, when he can be Taz, he's great, but it's like, this was go out there and have a five-minute match and just go back and forth, and it was like, there was just nothing here. So then we had two handicap matches in a row, Lance. Are you aware of that? We had Saturn and Malenko versus Rikishi, and the main event was Hunter and the Big Show versus Kane. Well, for some reason, in the first handicap match... All three men were in the ring at the same time. They're trying to double-team Rikishi. He's actually making them look like geeks. He beats both their asses. And finally, he hits the Rikishi driver on Malenko. He hits the belly-to-belly on Saturn. Goes for his move, but out comes Eddie Guerrero. He whacks him with a gimmick for the DQ. Another shit DQ. Heels destroy Rikishi's ankle. Nobody cares. And Too Cool runs down to make the save. So I bring that up because in the next match, it is a handicap match. But in that match, Hunter and the Big Show politely stand on the apron waiting to tag the other in. Why did they do that? It's WWE. They they apply the rules they want to at the time. It's even more astounding because a chair gets involved and it's made very clear there are no DQs in this match. So why were they standing on the apron waiting for a tag? So they just waste time. They're just wasting time to get to the end of the two hours. And finally, Hunter brings the chair into the ring. Go to pedigree, Kane. Rock hits the ring. I swear to God this happened. Rock runs down. He sprints down the aisle. He slides in the ring to make the save for Kane. Big Show grabs him and choke slams him. Like the biggest geek. So, another example, by the way, The Rock was great. So, you could do this, and The Rock would still be over. But This is is after the match he got pinned in, too. Yeah. They don't get it, so they kept doing this for everybody. And we got a generation of fucking geeks. And no more rocks. So, anyway, they chokeslam him. He's a geek. And then, Cactus runs down. X-Pac runs down. Cactus starts running wild on everybody. Runs over Tori, hits the ring... Kane and the Big Show are doing these wretched spots in the ring. Rock hits the Big Show with a chair. Kane hits the Big Choke Slam. And the match was still going. So the ref comes in and counts the pin. I didn't even notice that. Yeah. That was... There's no DQs. So they did a full post-match angle while the match was still going on. They do the pin. And then they do the exact same angle again. They start beating up all the good guys. Cactus makes another comeback. And he runs wild on everybody. And that's the end of the show. So, for the record, by the way, besides everything they do with The Rock earlier, The Rock is facing the big show at the next pay-per-view. So they're setting it up where it's one loser against another loser to determine which guy is less of a loser. And if you recall, we had a decade of that afterwards. 
And do you know how many people got over in the mid-2000s doing the angle where you beat both guys leading into a pay-per-view to see which guy is least loser E. I don't even know what you would call it. The biggest... It's not even the biggest loser. It's like... I guess it is the biggest loser. Anyway. No, it's determined the... Who is less of a geek? Yes, it's the... Who? You have two geeks facing each other. The lesser of two evils, so to speak. Yeah, to determine the king of the geeks. Well, no, because the guy that loses to the other loser is the biggest loser. That's true. He's the biggest geek. (laughs) Anyway. Yeah, so this is where it all started, everybody. What we bitched about for years and years. 50-50 booking, beat both guys leading to a pay-per-view, beat a guy like a drum, and he still gets over. It was all because of The Rock! (laughs) The Rock wasn't so goddamn charismatic. No, he ruined this business. He didn't even mean to. He ruined the business by being great. Yeah, although at least the baby faces stood strong at the end, and, and to me, that's the biggest thing missing today. We go off the air with people being miserable way too often. Yeah, every single show. Yep. Every single show. Well, I didn't write down the finishes, did you? Nope. Mm. Well, it's not the same without Vinny anyway. Yeah, there was a couple clean ones, a bunch of DQs, and a bunch of other bullshit. All right, let's just play the music anyway. <laughs> what do you think about that? There we go. The finishes on this show were... I can try and make them up. Yep. Clean pin. Let's see. Distraction into a pin. Yep. DQ. DQ. Sure. And some other bullshit. Guy didn't get over. Okay. Perfect. Fine job, Mini. You have Monday Night Raw number 352, February 21st of the year 2000. He opened up with with a recap of SmackDown in which DX had a bus. They locked Kane and Paul Bearer in the bus. They locked Cactus Jack in the bus. Since when was Paul Bearer back? He showed up with uh, Kane last on the uh, at What's the end of that right match. Here? Yeah, like two two weeks ago. Yeah, this recap that they had of of SmackDown. So yes, Kane and Paul Bearer went into a bus. Cactus Jack went into a bus. Rock went into a bus, but somehow Rock escaped the bus and he hit Big Show with a two by four. That's what happened on SmackDown. Sweet. There's a DX Express mm-hmm. named after the Lex Express, a, a big popular thing in the world of professional wrestling that we need to bring back yes obviously such a rousing success the first time lots of yes. expresses in the world of wrestling midnight sure rock and roll sure lightning yeah so the bus is here on raw because as jerry Lawler points out they're like big rock stars money's no object to these guys hmm what a novel concept I'm watching stars. Yeah, they're not all broke and can be fired and lose yeah. their homes. They're, they're, they're not desperate. And, and there's only a small number of them des- here. At least there's somebody. There's only a few guys that actually have a bus here on the show. They instruct the driver to watch the bus. Like the driver's going to stop any outraged yeah. superstars and vandalize the thing. Yeah, he was like a buck twenty soaking wet. Yeah, and not young. DX comes out to a remix theme song. They are here in the Georgia Dome. It's a huge, rowdy, loud crowd. Great environment. This is the go home show. You know, they still only drew 28,000 people. Like, I, even when WCW was really sucking, mm-hmm. they were still putting 42,000 people in the building. Yes. Which I believe they WCW announced was 39,000 because they're incompetent. <laughs> of course. But yeah, they only drew like 28,000 people to this show here. I realize there's a small crowd for this building, but it's still a big crowd for Monday Night Raw. There was a lot of hollow echo here as these mm. guys did their promos. Got it, yes. So before they can say anything, the Rock interrupts. There were no hollow echoes for The Rock's entrance. There were screams and cheers and hollers. This was the opposite of last night's Raw crowd. They're very loud and rowdy, yes. Yes. So Rock notes that Hunter cuts the same promo every every week and never actually says anything. Hunter says, Rock, you're here by yourself. Out comes Cactus Jack. So here's Jack's story. Yes, he says, you abandoned me in the middle of the road last week. But I have been hitchhiking since I was, since I was 17. So I hitched a ride with Big Earl the Trucker. We found Kane and Paul Bearer along the way, and they're here too. They come out. Cactus, as far as I could tell, booked a trios match. All right. Sure. A brawl broke out. The pilot of this, if you're doing the math, it's Hunter, Road Dog, Billy Gunn, and X-Pac against Cactus, Kane, and Rock. And these numbers do not add up. So this is a brawl going on, and X-Pac is in the middle of the ring, frantically looking for something to do. <laughs> looking for anyone with a spare fist to hit him with. 
And finally, Big Show arrives, hits everybody, hits everybody with a chair. And of course, Hunter, Pedigree's Cactus Jack. I've already forgotten. Is this another turn? Was he a heel the last time we saw him, or was he a baby face? He was a heel. Are we sure about that? I think this, this may be the culmination. You missed last week. I didn't. Actually, so actually it's I, possible he was a baby face last I, week. Even though I did not do the show last week, I did watch Raw last week. Wow. You I, didn't watch Nitro? I did not watch Nitro. Oh, I should make you go back. You can't skip a week of Nitro. Are you kidding me? I watched everything, even though Are I Are you there. kidding me? Maybe, we'll talk. Maybe we'll, we'll see how it goes. I may, I may, I may force this before I send your paycheck. I'll be honest. I, I, I considered watching it. And then I remember I have to watch the Royal Rumble too, or uh, uh, Elimination Chamber. Mm-hmm. So I thought that that's was, your excuse. That, I had to watch the Elimination Chamber too. Well, you've got me there. <laughs> yeah, I do have you there. You'll pay for this, Vinny. One uh, way or the other. I'm sure you I always will. do. Yes. I, I always do. It's true. China and Chris Jericho. Versus Kurt Angle and the British Bulldog. Newsflash, the British Bulldog is still alive and well. I don't know if he's well. Well, not today. But I don't know why. Well, not even then. I thought he, he was, died shortly thereafter, if I recall correctly. He did not have... I, this sounds horrible, but I've been expecting him to die for months now. That is, in fact, horrible. We, we had forgotten this entire second Bulldog WWE run, WWF run. Yeah, my, my point is that the British Bulldog probably wasn't well. Yeah. That's fair. I, I could be wrong, but... So they're in Atlanta. Angle says he won gold medal in this town, but since then all they do is cheer for John Rocker and Isaiah Ryder. Yes, two years left he's got. That's still a long time. Yeah. It is? Well... If I told you you had two years left, would you be okay with that? I wouldn't be here. It's a long time, Craig. <laughs> you might be here. No, I wouldn't be here. If you knew he had two years left, you'd say he had better things to do. I yes. don't know. I don't know. Watching Raw Nitro? <laughs> Dude... You can't die before we finish these this Monday Night War. Do you understand? Okay. I'll put everything. He's got on. two years. I'll put everything. Yeah, on so hold. he could be here. Yeah, there's only a year left of Nitro. Okay, a little over a year. Yeah. I can screw off the other year. Whatever you want to do that for that. Sure. Yeah. What, what, what will we done with you? Or the rest of the week. Yeah. Seven days in a week, dude. Anyway, Angle hit China with a European belt on SmackDown because sources told him she was going to steal it and pawn it. For more plastic surgery. Yeah. It's not so much that he hit her with it, he kind of threw it at her. <laughs> now, the problem with things like that is, is I said this a million times. Actually, I actually got this from Charlie Brown and Lucy, the comic book. Sure. Where oh, I, now I understand. Charlie Brown I was, was confused he, he, was vo- he was always very upset that Lucy called him a blockhead. Right. Sure. And finally, Lucy just explained to him, if I really thought that you were a blockhead... I wouldn't call you a blockhead. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, it's one thing to like she say... She was lying to him, you realize. It's one thing to say that you're stealing the belt because you're going to pawn it off for more plastic surgery mm-hmm. if, for example, you look like Ryan Shamrock. Doesn't look like she's had a lot of surgery. No. But when you're China, and it's clear that over the last year you've had an abundance of plastic surgery, Bounce it's kind of like hitting a little too close to home. I see. You know what I'm saying? I see. That's what it was, I thought. It was a low blow on the truth. It was a low blow on a woman. Okay. This is all more interesting than the match, which went two minutes. Angle hit Jericho with the IC belt and pinned him with an angle slam. Too Cool tells Rikishi he should rest his ankle tonight. The doctor advises Rikishi not to wrestle. <laughs> this show is so stupid sometimes. Sure. <laughs> why, why did they want him to rest tonight? Because he has a bad ankle. Okay, but what was he going to do? Uh, wrestle Eddie Guerrero. Who has what? A broken arm. A broken arm fucking a elbow. Yes. Jesus, God almighty. Why was this match signed? Who signed this match? Rikishi with a broken leg <laughs> evil, against evil Eddie man. Guerrero with a broken elbow? That's what the match was. Dude. <laughs> and Rikishi's like, shut the fuck up. I can do this match. And I'm like, he's right. Why could he not do this match? What is preventing him from doing this match with Eddie Guerrero? Who's I guess, a broken elbow? I guess just the fact that he's a very large man putting any weight on the leg at all. Maybe they didn't want him walking or jogging either. Okay. Well, everything Eddie Guerrero does offensively involves his arm, which is broken. He has another one, though. And he's really small. Dumb. Anyway, well, Rikishi agreed with you. He told them to handle their business yeah. and the doctor to tape him up. Leave me alone. Too cool versus head cheese. You know, I, I got to say, I hate to say it. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I like this segment. What? Oh. So... Al Snow's backstage, mm-hmm. and he explains to Steve Blackman. He says, "Too cool is over because they dance," and he's absolutely right. By the way, yeah, I mean they're not over for any other reason. 
They're over because they dance and they have cool music. So he says, we need you, Steve Blackman, to dance. And I thought, you know what? <laughs> He's not wrong. The Steve Blackman is very boring. And if he went out there and danced, he would get over. Sure. So he gives him yellow glasses, the color of cheese. Mm-hmm. They hit their music. It's their old music. They come down. There's no dancing. There's no yellow glasses. But they do have the match. So they're doing this match in the ring. And Blackman is about to get the win. And Al Snow jumps on the apron and he says, Fucker, dance! <laughs> I regret to inform everyone. That's not a precise quote. I think you're paraphrasing there, but sure. Blackman says, I'm not going to dance. Fucker. Al Snow says, no, fuck you, dance! So you know what Steve Blackman does? He gets in the goddamn middle of the ring mm-hmm. and he starts doing the moonwalk. The I worst know. moonwalk I've ever I seen. Cried with laughter. And you know what? The fans, they go crazy. <laughs> Steve Blackman's dancing in the middle of the ring. Well, then he gets rolled up and pinned. Yeah. <laughs> so he is a goddamn moron. And Al Snow's an idiot. But I mean, fuck. If I gotta watch these fucking guys have matches, <laughs> like I enjoyed this. I was entertained. Okay. Fair enough. Delo, Godfather, and like fifteen women walk down the aisle. <laughs> A big crowd with the Godfather. A lot of talent in Atlanta. That I've heard is true. I've heard it's true. So it's D'Lo and the Godfather versus Perry Saturn and Dean Malenko. So there's a spot here where they're supposed to cut off the Godfather. I went to Atlanta. Yeah. For that Abdullah the Butcher. Oh, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I can confirm. Oh. Yeah. Well, now I wish I'd gone. So the idea for the heat is Godfather's going to do the the hoe train, which is what he calls his avalanche. He's going to run from one corner to the other. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Saturn is going to cut him off with a spear from the side. Yes. So Godfather starts running, and Saturn runs as fast as he can, and he, I don't know if his head was actually face down or his eyes were closed, but his, he goes head first into the Godfather's hip mm-hmm. and, like, legit almost knocks himself out. Well, I think part of the problem was, I think that he was late. I guess. And the Godfather was already running. Yeah. The, the train, the train... <laughs> had left the station? It had left the station. <laughs> so he fucking flies through the air to try to take this guy down. He hurts himself more than he hurt the Godfather. That's Clearly, good. He's crawling his ass back to the court. He probably got a concussion. I'm sure he did. it's 2000, so like we just keep wrestling. Mm-hmm. It's brutal. Well, he, he did keep wrestling. He did almost nothing the rest of the match. He took like one spine buster, and then at the very end, he, Dean tagged him in to hit his giant top rope elbow, and he got the win. But yeah, that was that. The Outlaws bicker with the Dudleys. Say, you follow our lead. And the Dudleys say, no, you guys watch us and you learn. We can confirm the bus is still here. Okay, here's the match. And here's what it's building to. It took me a while to figure out what the match was. Quite yeah, frankly. me too. I thought it was a four-way. Then it's, I found out it was a tag match. It's an eight-man tag match with the Hardys, Edge, and Christian on one side. And the New Age Outlaws and the Dudleys on the other side. So, okay, fine. Two babyface tag teams against two heel tag teams. I gotcha. But at the pay-per-view in six days, it's the Hardys versus Edge and Christian and the Dudleys versus the Outlaws. Hmm. So, it, the, Someone with quite a sense of humor booked this match. I guess. So this thing went like 10 minutes. It was good. For the first yeah. nine, it was really good. It was These very good. These guys were working their asses off. till it went off the rails. Super hot crowd. And then, oh my God, what a clusterfuck unfolded before my eyes. Well, first off, Jeff Hardy is getting all of the screams from the women. And then Edge tags in, gets all the screams from the women. Nobody screams for the men anymore. No. That's how few people we've got left here. You've mm. been on this lately. Yeah, it's because it's, it's just patently obvious. Like... Why Why do people go to wrestling? Why do women go to wrestling? I mean, it seems patently obvious over the last three years that they're not going to watch other women wrestle. Sure. They're, they're, they used to go to watch the men. Mm-hmm. Now they're not even there anymore. That's them. Yeah. They're, they're, they're falling by the way. The big dog's gone and the women have left. Hmm. It, it has happened. I don't know if that's the sole reason, but like the women's audience is very much down since the big dog left. So... Can I recap this finish? I, I wish somebody else would. Yes, please. So, Bubba, everybody turns on everybody else. Mm-hmm. Bubba gets a chair and he hits Mr. Ass right in the head. Okay? So, Jeff goes up top because he's going to do a senton onto Billy Gunn. 
Bubba's standing there and he's holding his chair up celebrating because he hit Mr. Ass in the head. He gets yanked out of the ring and in doing so, he drops the chair and it literally lands right where Jeff is going to land. Edge is dead, but he sees that the chair is in the way. So he stops being dead long enough to pull the chair out of the way. (laughs) Jeff flies off the top and he hits a senton. He realizes he's on the wrong side. Mm -hmm. So he has to leap to the other side to cover Mr. Ass. Earl Hebner goes, one, two, Jeff gets yanked out of the ring. Edge leaps onto Billy Gunn. Mm -hmm. Earl counts three because two plus one is three. Hold on. You're right. And Edge, Edge realizes two plus one is three. But I only got one of those. Sure. So he tells Earl to count. (laughs) Earl says, it's over. Mm -hmm. Earl goes over to the referee and he goes, Edge and Christian and the Hardys win. Guy rings the bell. That's the end. Even at WCW's dumbest, okay? I've seen people not in the match get pinned. (laughs) Okay? I've seen referees do a count when the other guy wasn't even on him. Mm-hmm. But at least in both of those cases, the ref counted three. He didn't count two and then one. <laughs> this ref, Earl fucking Hebner of all people, not Nick Patrick. Earl counted two for one guy, one for the other guy, and that equals three, and the match is over. I've never seen that before. <laughs> I've been watching for 30 years now. I've never seen that before. That was the finish. I think... I think Earl actually counted three before Edge even got there. I'm pretty sure Billy was just in a vacuum when the three count occurred. It's still two plus one. It's not good. So the one is no longer for Edge. It's for the air. Yes. Okay? That is true. That is true. Either way, this is stupid. Oh, I agree. I think Jeff Earl, was nowhere near this guy when he counted three. He was out three. of the ring. I think Earl thought he counted three when Jeff was on him. I don't know what happened. But yes, this was going so long so well and then completely fell apart fast and decisively. Acolytes and Mark Henry versus the Hollies and Viscera. Dude, Mark Henry and the Acolytes. Yeah. Versus Viscera and the Hollies. So on SmackDown, Mae Young beat the Acolytes at poker, but then used the money to pay them to help Mark win matches because he's giving birth to her child and I guess has to put the child through college. Actually, she's giving birth to his she's child. She's giving birth to his child. You know what? It's anyway, raw in 2000. Anything could Who happen. gives a shit? Yeah, he could give birth. That to would him. not be the most embarrassing thing they had Mark Henry it's do. True. So, yeah. His character could give birth to a hand. It really could. Sure. So, let's see. Uh, it's a short match. The Acolytes pin crash with a double powerbomb. Yeah. In the middle of a nothing match on <laughs> Raw with Viscera and the Hollies versus Mark Henry and the Acolytes, Bradshaw decides... I'm going to give Crash Holly a back superplex off the top rope. The very top rope. And nearly kill both of us. That's true. And, and Dude. And not only that, when uh, he did this, because Bradshaw would do like the middle rope back superplex all the time. So when JR said he did it off the top rope, I said, no, he didn't. I rewound to check. The camera angle was so terrible. It's my, my, my stance lately. It's shitty camera angles. But yes, I, live, I thought it was off the middle rope. Only on careful inspection. The second time to realize both his feet were, in fact, on the top rope. And then they did a double powerbomb and pinned him. So the Acolytes leave. Their job is done. May Young runs out and attacks Crash. So May runs down to stomp a mud hole and Crash. Yeah. She's pulling her kicks. Yeah. Because <laughs> God knows she might hurt him if she kicks him to the body. She can barely move. Yeah. Just fucking kick this poor Anybody guy. worried when she was off balance? Every he'll time. Be, he'll be okay. So, Holly clotheslines her. Viscera splashes her. It's a huge, traumatic scene. Everyone rushes to her aid. The heels are laughing. And Lawler asks, like, like it's a joke, do you think she'll lose the baby? They're teasing that the heels killed her unborn child. Yes. Mm-hmm. First off, can you imagine that storyline in 2019? No. Second, can you imagine them letting Mae Young in the ring? No. At this age in 2019? No. Never. Backstage, in what I can only assume is the world's largest ambulance, they have room not only for May, but also Mula and Mark Henry. <laughs> Test versus Chris Benoit. 
So they're doing this match. It goes like a minute. Eddie Guerrero comes out, and this is the first, they talked about it earlier, but I didn't realize how absurd this was until right here. Eddie has his gear on. He has his boots, he has his tights, he's wearing a t-shirt, and he has his arm in a sling still. He's going to do a match later. He's dressed to wrestle with his arm in a sling. He's carrying a weapon. When he came back out with it later, I determined it was a giant Allen wrench, as far as I can tell. It's a big-ass pipe. Do you yeah. know what an Allen wrench is? Yeah. I don't know why you need one this big. That's what it looked like. That's a big ass Allen. Yes. Needs to be wrenched. <laughs> so Eddie gets in the apron. I was so mad. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not leaving anything out in like a distraction spot or a ref bump. Eddie climbs up to the apron. He pulls Benoit off of Test's shoulders. He hits Test with the Allen wrench. And Benoit hits the headbutt and pins him. And the announcers are like, he was on the apron. It's not only that. He's on the apron and he's trying to get a hold of Benoit's feet because yeah. Test has done the pump handle part of a pump handle slam. Sure. He can't reach him. Nope. He's only got one arm. So he's reaching and reaching and reaching and reaching. And finally he pulls him towards them and he whacks the guy with the deal. And I'm like, where the fuck is the ref? Because I can't see the ref, all right? Yeah. So they suddenly cut to a long shot and the ref's standing right there looking at him. Just standing there. <laughs> This How is not a good night for the refs on Raw. This is not a fucking disqualification. I don't know. Benoit hits the headbutt, and that was it. Now, aside from this stupid fucking finish, this was Test's best match in forever. Well, yeah, he's in there with Benoit. He he, <laughs> he came in there trying to be all aggressive. Like, sure. Bad yeah. move, dude. <laughs> well, Benoit beat the shit out of him. Yeah. Rikishi versus Eddie Guerrero in a no DQ match. Rikishi comes out. He has three crutches taped together to support his massive weight. Radicals are cackling at this backstage. Eddie comes out. He still has his Allen wrench and the microphone. Says Rikishi is not looking too cool. Says he heard himself dancing, maybe doing the bump. And he gets in the ring and he turns his back and Rikishi just whacks him with his mega crutch and pins him with a bonsai splash. And Eddie, God bless him. <laughs> Eddie's only job here was to turn his back, get hit with a crutch, and take the splash. And Rikishi does the bonsai splash. So he's sitting on Eddie's chest. Eddie sells this by like doing a sit-up and burying his face deep into Rikishi's crotch. <laughs> just to make himself the biggest dummy in the world. The biggest fool you've ever seen. And he's, he's trying to sell this, and he forgets he has to get his shoulders down. <laughs> so he leans back quickly so the ref can count three. I howled. All I know is that... Well, a few things. First off, I remembered when the Radicals debuted and lost all their matches on SmackDown. I forgot about this. They have to keep on losing? What a fucking burial of Eddie Guerrero. He could not have looked like a bigger geek than he did here. Radicals beat the hell out of Rikishi, but because it's 2000 and not 2019, he's got a bunch of friends. Yes. They all run down to make the save for the guy. And the place went crazy when Rikishi danced. So mm -hmm. overall, a thumbs up segment here. Did I you notice Rikishi putting uh, Eddie's arm on his chest so when he, you know, yeah, he was, the he was attacking the bad arm. Yeah. Yeah. Psychology. Right. <laughs> Michael Cole is asking Cactus about the bus ride on SmackDown. Cactus has him lay down to confirm it's scary to have Jack standing over you threatening to drop an elbow. He promises he will do an elbow off the cage and reminds us all he has to win on Sunday or he's done. Taz is putting on wrist tape. Oh, my God. Big boss man and Taz. Taz has him in the Taz mission. The boss man grabs his nightstick. He starts hitting the dude in the head with his nightstick. Kind of. Right in front of the referee. Yeah. The ref's just standing there watching. And they sent down Albert to make sure that at Taz looked as tiny as possible. What a yes. rib on Taz. They it's... lay him out, double team him. This sucked in every way. What a complete rib on Taz. First, when he comes out with Bossman, like, okay, clearly they've given up on Taz and they just want to make him look, look like a fool. We'll put him in somewhere who's too, too big for half his offense. He had to jump up in the air to throw a punch at his head. Yeah. Then they throw in Albert, who's even bigger. Right. They're just trying to expose their own guy. And yes, <laughs> there was... He's sitting there with a nightstick, and the, answer, the ref calls to the bell, and the answer is saying, what for? What's he doing? And that's it. Yeah, this, this is garbage. Yeah, to be fair, Taz is short. Oh, I realize he's short, but the idea is when you've signed a guy, and you want to profit uh, off him, understood. you highlight his strengths and hide his weaknesses, not the other way around. And it would be one thing, by the way, if like he was lazy and you wanted to teach him to work, he's not going to get any taller. 
You know, Dave was mentioning last night, he was he was going on and on about how they'd never let Ricochet in the ring with Lashley. And they actually did. I guess he forgot about it. It was during the heat. But, I mean, maybe they didn't want him in the ring with Lashley because they didn't want you to see how short he was. Mm-hmm. You put him in there with Leo Rush, he looks like a big dude. Yes. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Putting they, Taz in there with fucking Albert. Why'd they put Leo with Lashley? Well, because Leo's gimmick is he's small. Yeah. I see. Well, he is. Again. Triple H, X-Pac, and Big Show versus Kane, Cactus Jack, and The Rock. They're doing this great trios match main event. Class, this, when we, the people have nostalgia for the Attitude Era, it's shit like this. Everyone's just working their ass off, brawling everywhere. The whole place is going crazy. Everyone, everyone comes off like a star. And then... The, the Rock gets the hot tag. He's about to do the people's elbow. He gets cut off for the second heat segment. And then when he goes to give the hot tag to Cactus Jack, six days where Cactus Jack goes into hell in the cell, Cactus gets the hot tag and the crowd gets colder. Well, they'd seen Cactus in there forever mm-hmm. and he tagged the Rock. Yeah. And they were very excited for that. Yeah. And they thought it, they were going to the finish. And then they just got heat again and tagged Cactus back in. They didn't even tag Kane back in. No. So. Maybe, Vinny. Mm -hmm. It's because the fucking guy has zero credibility right now. Well, it's funny you should mention that, Brian. Yeah! Didn't I bring this up weeks ago and you fuckers argued with me? Well, I'll be honest. I figured at some point he would regain some of that credibility. I told you. No, he never did. Well, Brian, a funny thing. He got his hands in a fire extinguisher, but then Hunter grabbed it and hit him and pinned him. Yes. (laughs) It's buried every week. Every fucking week. And you know what? I'm a big fan of Triple H. I think he's doing great things with NXT. I can't wait for Vince to take over the XFL and get the fuck out of here and let Hunter take over, okay? But, dude, you know that if Hunter was feuding with Finn Balor and they were leading towards a retirement match where Finn Balor was going to retire Triple H. Yes. And they were going to go for four months leading to this. Mm -hmm. You're telling me that not one time Triple H is going to get a win over Finn Balor? Are you fucking out of your mind? I strongly suspect he would. Of course he would. Cactus got nothing. And you know why it makes me mad? Because then they act like I'm stupid, okay? So Cactus gets beaten right here, all right? And then everybody starts brawling, and Cactus gets mad. And he starts chasing Triple H. Triple H runs away. I'm like, what the fuck are you running away from? You've beat this guy every goddamn time you've been in the ring together. Yeah. He hasn't gotten anything on you. No. He hasn't gotten anything on you when he has a sock on his hand. No. He's got nothing on you when he's got a book in his hand. He's got nothing on you when he's got his flannel on. Every incarnation of Cactus Jack, you've beaten and humiliated. Why are you running? Oh, he runs away. Oh, I'm so scared. And Cactus gets this big metal gimmick and he puts it through the window of the bus. And I'm like, wow, you beat up a bus. Like, get my cable bill for Sunday. Yes. I just couldn't even... I mean, I could believe it because I watched it the original time, and I fucking remember it. But even watching it back, it's like, can you imagine this? Yeah. They, 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 in, in hindsight, they very clearly dropped the ball. Uh, I can't imagine anyone watching Raw at the time thinking Cactus Jack had a snowball's chance in hell of winning the pay-per-view. And it turns out he didn't. So maybe, I guess that, maybe that was their mission. Yeah, I, it was not a bad show, but I was just baffled by that finish. There's six dudes in the ring. You so can we go back four else? weeks to when I said that he should have gotten that win on Raw? Brian, at some point, he should have gotten a win Thank on Raw. Thank you. And and fuck, I mean, yeah, I understand he's on his way out, and they're trying to make Hunter a star. Mm-hmm. But, like, Hunter... He's winning at the end! Hunter idolizes Ric Flair, okay? Uh, fucking, where was Ric Flair? I know he's on the other show. But, like, to call the guy up and, and say... If you give Cactus zero credibility, who have you beaten in that retirement match? Nobody. You beat a guy in a flannel. Like, give him a win over you, make him look like a threat, and then you fucking beat him and retire him and you beat somebody. You ended a main event big time guy's career. Instead, you beat a guy that can't catch a win. You You can't catch a win in a six man with a fire extinguisher. You beat a charity case. And that's what it is. (laughs) You beat a... Uh, a feel-good story. But yes. They, and they, you know what else is funny about it? If Hunter was booking this today, and there was someone else in the role of Hunter, I promise you, Hunter would have done a job in this feud. Well, Brian, do you have my music ready? I think so. 
I'm all depressed. <laughs> I understand, actually. I sympathize. The finishes on this show were pin after belt shot, clean pin, pin by the illegal man after he nearly knocked himself out, pin after partners kept turning on each other and the ref counted a pin that didn't happen, clean pin, pin after interference, pin after weapon shot in no DQ match, DQ to the weapon shot, pin after weapon shot. Good job. Why, thank you. Monday Night Raw, WWF Monday Night Raw number 353, February 28th from the year 2000. So as noted, it's the night after No Way Out. They're also back in Madison Square Garden. Mm -hmm. They just did a pay-per-view from this place like six weeks ago. They're back doing doing Raw. Apparently they draw well in Madison Square Garden. I guess there's that. So the Helmsleys come out for a promo. And Hunter at first is a little down on the dumps. He's... He learned to respect Mick Foley, he says. He's actually sad that Foley's not going to be there anymore. He's prepared a special video tribute to Mick Foley. I wonder if this was, like, a surprise 19 years ago. It sure ain't a surprise when they do this today. Every show, the heel comes out. Oh, I've got to put over my opponent. What a great person they are. It's a swerve! It's a swerve. They're a shithead! The video turns from lots of pictures of Mick just being wacky to Hunter kicking his ass over and over again. And the, the shots of Foley where he was trying to look silly about his, at his dirt worst. They had a shot where he was walking me and scratching his ass, and they showed it like 50 times. Because I especially like the one where he uh, got bounced off the announcer's table and his underwear had ripped in the back. I didn't catch that one. Yeah, it was there. Yeah, I, I did like that some of these clips were from Foley's own home movies as a kid. So you can't be that embarrassed by them. He gave them to you. So they're having a great old time, but then out come the big show and Shane McMahon. And Shane... At well, the they pay- Foley videos where Foley provided all of this footage, or they, they got the footage. Not sure if Foley gifted it to Triple H for this video. Regardless. Uh, Shane, at the pay-per-view, helped the big show beat The Rock. And so Big Show is now your number one contender for the world title. Shane says... Shane gets in the ring with... Triple H and Steph and says, I'm not going to sit back and let you steal this company from me. Hmm. Oops. So, somebody missed a cue here. I don't know if it was The Rock or the music guy or something. But for a moment, they just all stopped talking and looked at each other. For like five seconds. <laughs> I could not figure out if Shane forgot. He's, he's either already forgetting lines, which given that could be too. watching him today, he very easily could have forgotten his line. But nobody, like, helped him get his line. Yeah. And then finally they hit The Rock's music. I think my theory is, what are the chances they forgot to hit The Rock's music? Low. So I think that he forgot his fucking line, and they gave him a second to try and remember, Mm -hmm. and then he didn't remember, and so they hit The Rock's music, and he came out. So Rock calls calls them all assholes. He admits the Big Show beat him, but he's not going to whine and cry about it. He's just going to go to WrestleMania anyway and win the title there. Not sure how that works, but that's his plan. Hunter says the rock is back at the bottom of the bottom of the ladder. Hunter then imitates himself, which was interesting, <laughs> and he books the rock against the Brooklyn books the rock against the Brooklyn Brawler. Somehow this took twenty minutes. This sucked. Yeah. Is it punishment to get put in the ring with the Brooklyn Brawler? It, they were going off about how, how what a travesty this was and how embarrassing it was, and I'm thinking he had a top contenders match. Right. He was beaten. He should go to the bottom. That's right. how it should be. Well, other than the fact that that's never happened ever in the history of WWE well, I realize in real that. life. I realize that. In, in the, sports. In, 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 a, in a real sport, that's what will go on. point of this was, it was a 20-minute promo. It went on forever, and it was no good. Right. So the show was off to a bad start. And it was legit 20 minutes. Yes. This was 20 minutes of the show. And all we got out of it was nothing. Yeah. We got The Rock <laughs> versus The Brooklyn Brawler. Yes. It took 20 minutes to set up The Rock versus The Brooklyn Brawler. Yes. I was Har- already sweating. <laughs> the Hardys are angry at the APA. They pick a fight. And so we get Hardys versus APA. God. <laughs> they do this match. They beat the hell out of Jeff forever. Mm-hmm. Matt gets a blind tag, hits the ring, hits Bradshaw with a twist of fate, pins him. This asshole kicks out at three. Yep. <laughs> it's just... How... I just don't even get it. How could anybody respect JBL? 
It's been 19 years now. One horrific story about this guy after another. I mean, yeah, maybe he was told to kick out at three, but like, why even bother then? Just have the guy pin Farouk or something. It's just, it's just ridiculous. Angle, who is now the Intercontinental Champion and the European Champion, is backstage bragging to a security guard who looks totally bored. Then Angle comes out, issues an open challenge, and who should answer but Rikishi? <laughs> so, this was the point during the show where Paisley walked in before bedtime. Oh. oh. She always wants to sit on my lap and see what's on TV. Okay. She has no idea what wrestling is. She she sees Neither pro wrestling, and she always, without question, says, it's daddy doing gymnastics. She says every time. So, it's Rikishi versus Kurt Angle. And she looks at the screen... <laughs> She goes, it's daddy doing gymnastics. Okay, good. I said, which one is daddy? Mm. She says, the one with the big butt. <laughs> so apparently I'm Rikishi. You could do worse. Yep. And then and then she said, he did jump and sit. Mm. That's where you jump and do a seat drop on the trampoline. I follow. And Rikishi did that with a leg drop. Yeah. So she was really entertained by this match. Mm. And then a bunch of stupid stuff happened. So Rikishi does the Not stink nearly face. Not fun. He does a stink face. Kurt is appalled. Leaves the ring. Says these people came to see a wrestling match, not your butt in my face. Jericho and China, who are still a thing for some reason, they come out and attack Kurt. It is three on one advantage baby faces. Eventually, the radicals attack, and then Too Cool joins in, and the baby faces clear the ring, and they get Rikishi to dance, and then they get Jericho and China to dance, and the place just loses their minds. Mm-hmm. Everyone's because going, people dance. Everyone's going nuts to see this dance party. This was fun. And Chris Jericho should stick to rocking instead of dancing. Oh, come on. China sucked. Well, she did. I don't know what Jericho was doing, but he had a little bit of rhythm. Well, China had nothing resembling rhythm. <laughs> I wouldn't even say he had motion. Yeah, kind of kind of to the beat. China, the best thing I can say is that she... Uh, she was alive. I, I would say that she rocked, but that would, she, <laughs> she, she didn't rock. <laughs> but she kind of teetered back and forth. Sure. Michael Cole interviews Jericho in China. The Radicals interrupt. Saturn challenges Jericho, who accepts. China technically accepted for him, I guess. Edge and Christian versus Head Cheese. So Terry's on commentary. She has left the Hardy Boys Mm -hmm. and is apparently trying to uh, get on Edge and Christian's good side. Yeah, woo them back. Recruit them or something, yeah. Sure. So uh, Al has a new music and video for Steve Blackman. It sucks. Terry says, this is not doing anything for me at all. Terry explains that when she was in the hospital, the Hardys only saw her like twice a week instead of every single day. And therefore, she turned on them. I've said a lot of bad things about Al Snow on this show. I thought Al looked great in this match. Had a fun little three-minute tag match. So, Steve Blackman is running wild. He is about to win when Terry unveils her cunning plan. I actually zoned out. I have no idea what the finish was. I'm looking at my notes right now. I think that Edge and Christian won, right? Terry came down to the ringside with a large black garbage sack. Mm-hmm. Something aside. So, I thought she was doing commentary. She yeah. did that, yes. Okay. Yeah. She uh, reveals from the garbage sack a big giant cheese head. And she puts it on and this distracts Blackman. He is infuriated and Christian drop kicks him and Edge spears him. I'm so him. happy I zoned out. <laughs> yeah. The show is markedly worse now that I know that. It probably was a regular sized cheese head. She's just very tiny. That's fair. That's fair. Rock is backstage, conveniently standing next to a picture of Elvis Presley. That was a nice touch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'd like to mention that they're in Madison Square Garden. Right. They put this show together for the Mecca. Mm-hmm. Dude. I'd have banned them back then. Mm. Forget 2019. ROH would have been running in 2001 when they started up. 2002. The uh, Brooklyn Brawler failed to defeat The Rock. What? But you know what? He got the heat on him. He did get offense on The Rock. I'm not making that up, everybody. The Brooklyn Brawler got the heat on The Rock. And Rock was forced to fight back <laughs> against the Brooklyn Brawler. And then he did win. Well, you know, if you beat a guy out of the gate, it means nothing. He made Ra- Brawler look strong before he beat him. This was a 40-second match. It's the best I could do. <laughs> So Rock challenges Hunter to a fight. That's even worse, because that means Brawler beat on him for half the match. <laughs> Rock challenges Hunter to a fight. Hunter is about to fight, but Shane puts a stop to, puts a stop to him and says, no, 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 I see how this goes. Next thing you know, he's goading you into putting this title on the line. 
They say, Rock, it's going to be Triple H and the Big Show at WrestleMania. That's all there is to it. And Rock says, quote, if WrestleMania is going to be Triple H and the Big Show, then WrestleMania is going to absolutely suck. I howled. He's not wrong. That was the best thing on this wrestling show. It may have been, actually. It's funny, because he says this, and it's blatantly true, and everyone cheers, and the bad guys all have a huddle. Like, you know what? (laughs) That probably would suck. (laughs) So, Steph then books a handicap match. Rock versus Big Show and Triple H. And if he can pin either man, then he will be the top contender for Mania. He has to to what now again? He has to pin either man. Okay. Shane is upset, but The Rock accepts his challenge, and that's that. They make it very clear, if you do not win, it's your last chance. No, no. If You ha- you have to pin yes. either man, it's not It's your win. last chance. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's your last chance. Saturn versus Jericho. Malenko pulls the ropes down as Jericho goes for a cabrada, and Jericho goes flying out of the ring. Malenko lays out China, too, and then Saturn suplexes China. Somehow the ref is distracted. She low blows Saturn, and Jericho hits the Cabrata for the win. It's always Malenko that beats up China. You ever notice that? It was Saturn that gave her suplex here. That's true. Dean punched her. Yeah. yeah. Saturn suplexed her. Anyway, point of this is nothing match. Mess by the end. Multiple. This was one of those shows where, for some reason, like, every finish had to have ten guys interfering ten times. Yeah. I was so sick of it by the end. Both shows. They get in. Uh, Malenko and China get involved. China gets laid out. Malenko gets involved a second time. China gets involved a second time. And all this, by the way, is in a match that goes like two minutes. What do you interference twice in two minutes? So Billy Gunn got hurt. As I recall, he was doing a fame asset to the Dudleys through a table or something. He hurt his shoulder. Hmm. Now, quick story. I. From later this year, he, he's had a long time with a shoulder injury. <laughs> you are a Billy Gunn historian. I have a lot Vinny. of Billy Gunn facts. That's I have funny. no idea why. I don't know why. For some reason, late in 2000, I bought a copy of WWF magazine, <laughs> and it had a picture of Billy from his rehab. I remember this vividly. Like 220 pounds. Oh, are you kidding me? 180, maybe. Yes. Ass facts with very high. It, <laughs> he was so Let's not do that. Skinny. <laughs> yes, he got small quickly. So he's hurt. And Road Dog says, we have a title shot. It'll be me and X-Pac. And Billy's pissed and says, no, no, I'm ready to go. It doesn't matter. And Hunter tries to call him down. And Billy says, I'll kick your ass with one arm. The best is, he's got a fucking sling on his arm. He does. And the other two guys in DX are healthy. Yeah. So they want to fight for the tag belts. And he's mad. And his exact line is, what do you mean I'm not ready? Well, you got a giant sling on your goddamn arm. Mm -hmm. Hunter says... Listen, now's not the time. Edge and Christian are the number one contenders, but we're going to use a little bit of executive influence. And DX is getting the shot tonight, but it's Road Dog and X-Pac. This makes Billy so mad. And so DX beats the shit out of him, mm-hmm. deservedly. Sure. <laughs> they boot his ass out of the room. Yeah. And we're supposed to get behind Billy Gunn as a singles babyface. I guess. Vinny, historian, <laughs> tell me how this goes. As I recall, badly. Okay. Just check it. No, it's a long... Because it went badly the last time, too, He's gone for a long time, so I, I, maybe Billy and Chuck by the time he gets back. Oh, uh, let's see. Mark Henry... Oh, God, here we go. <laughs> Mark Henry versus Crash Holly for the hardcore title. Henry is destroying him. He's about to win. But May says... May Young says, I want to do a splash. She so does a splash. Where's Mark to say, what are you talking about? You're you're with child. And 80. He just stood there. Yeah. To be fair, she was only 76. Vinny. I apologize. So she does the splash. She sells her abdomen. They call for EMTs. She gets wheeled out. There's no finish to this hardcore championship match. They go to break. They come back. They announce Mae Young is in labor. Yeah. And this is where my mother oh! walked into the room. Oh! <laughs> So, I turned it off. Yes. And went into the other room. Yes. Nothing personal, Mother. You don't want to watch this. I'm doing doing you a favor, Mom. Yes. Okay. This pissed me off. Taz versus Chris Benoit. So, they've been throwing Taz in there with giants to make him as small as possible so he can't do any of his cool moves. They put him in there with Benoit, who is awesome and is the right size to do all of Taz's stuff. They They could, and God bless them, they tried their best to have a good match with the 90 seconds or so they had. They're chopping each other and suplexing each other. Meanwhile, in 90 seconds, Eddie Guerrero interferes twice and gets ejected, and then Bossman and Albert immediately attack. 
Yeah, Eddie Eddie gets inside the ring to distract the ref. He's told to get out. That's the first time. Mm-hmm. He interferes a second time. The ref ejects him. I'm like, I've seen this ten times on this show. Yeah. Then Albert and Bossman also get in the ring. Now it is a disqualification. And then I wrote, and I quote, Life is too short to watch shows like this. I should have quit then. And once again, they couldn't have made Taz look any shorter. Nope. And they destroyed him, left him laying, made fun of his home being the hometown boy, and they left. So, now we're getting to the meat of this May Young thing. Excuse me? Don't say Must meat. we? So the May, gist of this May Young thing. The EMT says, we ain't going to make it to the hospital. Mm-hmm. Wheeler backstage. They go backstage. He asks for a garbage can. I guess two garbage cans to put her legs up. There's nothing else to put her legs up on. It had to be garbage cans. So they started looking down yonder. Mm-hmm. Now, there's so many things about this. Like, it was so stupid, but I did laugh. <laughs> you know, you know what? here's the thing about this thing, everybody. I'm sure it was profoundly idiotic, okay? <laughs> I'm sure in 2000, sure and I know this because I watched it in 2000, it was one of the dumbest things in the history of wrestling, okay? But we're watching it in 2019, <laughs> and as stupid as it is, I'm fairly convinced that if they did this in 2019, we'd probably forget about it by the end of the year. That's I see your point because there's so much more stupid stuff now. But my reaction to this was, a lot of times in these retro shows, we'll say something like, man, I forgot how horrible this was. Mm-hmm. Or, I remember this being horrible, but I, all, after all the horrible shit we've seen... It doesn't seem quite as horrible. This was worse. This was, I remember how horrible this was, and I braced myself, and then somehow it's a hundred times more horrible than I remember. You know, I've heard other people say that, including Lance, but like, I watched it, and it wasn't as bad as I remembered. I don't even know what to tell you. Because I've seen so much bad stuff in 19 years. I mean, it was bad, but there was some stuff to laugh at. Like, why was Pat Patterson looking down there? Why was Briscoe looking down there? Nobody had to look down there. That's true. She's out of control, and so they give her a cigar to calm her down. Sure. The EMT is trying to figure out what the hell's going on, and he's the first guy to say, May, when's the last time you had your period? She says, 1957. Which, by the way, she would have been 34. Hmm. Seems a little early. Hmm. But anyway, so he goes up to Mark, and matter-of-factly, he says... Are you sure you impregnated this woman? I don't know why I thought that was so funny. Like, this EMT didn't find the idea that he impregnated Mae Young ridiculous no. until he learned that she hadn't had a period since 1957. Then he began to question the situation. And meanwhile, Patterson and Briscoe are retching. But they're, they can't help but they're, look. They're 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 like fake throwing up. And by the way, this EMT. This doctor, I found out this week, Brutal Bob was working extra, and they had him slotted to play wow. the EMT, Wow! and he talked himself out of it, basically. <laughs> oh, what a mistake. He could have been a legend. He is a legend. How dare you? So, I just watched it, and I, I thought, I just can see Vince just howling, crying with laughter. Counting his money as he watches this segment. And the balls on this man. (laughs) He put this fucking thing on national television. He risked his deal with the USA Network, I feel. Putting this fucking thing on television. And the payoff, everybody, Mm -hmm. was that, in fact, she gave birth to a hand. And what's funny about it is... The story is... Oh, gosh. I was smartened up to this story just this week. Oh, no, no, no. I knew this forever. The hand, in the old days, there were vibrators shaped as hands. Hmm. So the story was, at some point, May had gotten a little excited, and the hand had fallen inside. It was stuck in there. For half a century. Well, we don't know how long. 
Well, I guess maybe 1957. Maybe that's what caused the problem. I guess. So, the whole key to this is... I have so many questions. They never revealed why it was a hand. No. They pulled the hand out, and Pat Patterson turns to everybody and he says, Let's give May Young a hand! And they'll go, Hey! And they cut away. It's never mentioned again. The announcers don't talk about it. Until today. There's no fucking <laughs> recap. No. It just, that's the end. That's the idea that they had months ago. This was the plan. This it's was not, the plan. It's not, let's do a pregnancy angle, we'll figure out the end later. Wow, that actually makes it even worse. Um, yeah. What more is there to add about this? Well, it's a Vincent Mann segment, so there had to be a fart joke in there. We had Patterson sure. apparently carrying around vice grips to get the doctor to pull the hand out of Miss May. I mean, who doesn't? Here, Carpenter, you probably do, actually. Sure. Do you want one in the truck right now? Uh, maybe. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, a lot of vomit and slime and... I like, I like, just a few weeks ago, Mark Henry was very excited by some yeah. panties. Oh. Okay. And then here he is, and he's waving the air like something smells rotten. Well, she farted here, Craig. I see. <laughs> I like that Mark Henry thought he was going to be a dad. He thought she was pregnant. Yes, yeah, so I thought that was made abundantly clear. Okay. And then when he finds it's just a hand instead of a baby, he just gives her a hand. Yeah. <laughs> this sucked, dude. You're being yes. far too kind. No, I didn't say it didn't suck. I said profoundly idiotic. <laughs> Can't believe this aired on national television and they didn't get canceled. That was it. I wrote this <laughs> I wrote this was a hundred times worse than I remember, and I uh, remember it being fucking awful. No, 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 no. I wrote the official lowest point in professional wrestling history. No, no, no. Get out of here. Okay, this week. I forgot to write that. It was the low point of this episode of Raw. <laughs> Absolutely. Dude. Which actually is saying something. I'd rather watch this a hundred times than another interview with Baron Corbin making fun of Roman Reigns having leukemia. Would you well, watch it with I your... fucking stand by that. Would you watch it with your mother in the room? Dude, my mom... <laughs> she probably saw this when it aired live. <laughs> Dudley's versus Road Dog and X-Pac. So on paper, this is a fun match. The problem is nobody wanted to cheer for either team. I believe this may have been the birth of the X-Pac sucks chant. Oh, I don't know. Let's give him a hand. I guess so. Kane comes the out. The birth. Mm-hmm. Oh, God. Whoosh. Yeah, yeah. Whoosh. I don't like to acknowledge you when you think you're funny. No. Oh, that was funny. So Kane... I didn't come, think. Kane comes out to kill X-Pac. He runs away, so Road Dog and the Dudleys all get choke stand instead. And the bell never rings. For the second time on this show, we have a championship match with no finish. Hunter, the big show, and the McMahons have a chat. Yeah. We get the real Mick Foley tribute video. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. That right. sucked. What? The original... The original was set to I Will Remember You. By Skid Row? No, you idiot. Oh. So they edited in Actually some work. some goofy music, mm -hmm. and so the music didn't match the actual... Right. The original, like, everything that she sang, they matched up something... I see. ...to play off the lyrics. I see. This one, they just put some stupid music in there, and it was cool to see, like, a bunch of clips. It was still, like, a nice video, mm -hmm. but the original was, like, a thousand times better. It's the opposite of giving birth to a hand. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got me there. Thank you. Uh, the Rock is walking backstage. Then we got Rock versus Triple H and Big Show. Here's something for y'all to think about. Besides the fact that it's in Madison Square Garden. With the exception of Mick Foley, who's virtually immobile at this point, that's your WrestleMania main event right there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Fuck, it was so boring. I've never seen a more boring match. They may as well have thrown... I've never seen a more boring match. <laughs> if they would have thrown Corbin in there, maybe it would have been more boring. They just beat on the rock for an hour, looking at the clock. Ah, oh, the overrun. We got seven more minutes. They fucking just beat on him and beat on him and beat on him. It's so boring. Am I wrong? Yes. Oh, get out of here. I thought it was a fine TV main event. It's boring. They... they 
did what they could with these three guys, beating, beating up the rock. It wasn't like they were just standing there or just doing chin locks. They were doing stuff. To be truthful, I thought there was more boring matches on Nitro than this. I didn't say there weren't. I just said this was You said boring. it was the most boring match you've ever seen. All right, obviously not that I've ever seen, but it was the most boring thing I've seen. Hyperbole. In the five minutes that I was watching this match. I see. So eventually, Rock ducks something. Big Show wipes out Hunter. And Rock takes out Show and Shane. He hits the rock bottom on Hunter and the people's elbow. But then before he can get the pin, Shane attacks for the DQ. So he does not, by the letter of the, the law they all agreed to, mm-hmm. he should not get his title shot now. Right. And they beat the rock up and left him laying, and that was the end of the show. Yeah, all the Foley chants, he just beat up the rock. You know, this was heat. <laughs> this was heat. This was a heat show. We're going to get heat from start to finish. <sighs> All right, you ready? I am prepared. Well, here we go. Got to turn up the music. Oh, I did... What happened here? Okay. I am still prepared. Fuck you. Trade professional. There he goes. Oh, the f- all the people that talk, Rob. <laughs> go ahead, Vinny. The finishes on this show were... Count out. Pin after distraction. Clean pin. Pin after interference on both sides. DQ due to interference. No finish in a tag team championship match. DQ in a handicap match. And I forgot to write down no finish in the hardcore championship match. What a great show. Sure. No, it sucked. Yeah. 